esteemed faculty members sitting here, dear students. Good evening. I was a little curious <coughs> to find about this institute. I was thinking that I'll directly talk to you and find out how you people are doing. How many cars do you think Maruti is making every year? Anybody? How many cars we make every year? Little louder, please. No, not really. So perhaps there is a first question is taking you by a very uh, big surprise. That means you have done no preparation whatsoever. The last car is Maruti launched recently. Yeah. Haven't launched. See, I, we will launch, we haven't launched. Solario. <coughs> when we are looking at uh, this kind of opportunity for you, perhaps to a great extent, apart from receiving the lecture or whatever I am going to talk about here, I think it will be an opportunity for you to look at a different kind of happenings in the environment you are going to work one or two years, three years down the line. Automotive industry in India right now, roughly about 2.7 million, 2.8 million per year. Passenger cars means 27 lakhs, 28 lakhs are sold, manufactured and sold in India currently. Roughly 45% is done by Maruti, is about 1.2 million per year. And when we look at roughly the monthly kind of volume for uh, Maruti is roughly about 100,000 a month. And when we look at per day, it's roughly about 4,300-4,400 cars per day being manufactured by Maruti. And if you look at perhaps one car rollout, is roughly about how much time one car rolling out of Maruti assembly lines. Any idea? Less than a minute. Eh? That's the kind of uh, industry I am coming from, what we see all the time running on uh, the roads. And when you perhaps get an opportunity to visit some such industrial unit, it should not only be a kind of a visual exercise, I think it will be a great opportunity for you to understand what is this entire business framework. So, at the moment, perhaps when I look at uh, uh, this evening, what I am going to talk to you, I think the question was that what I would be doing if I were a student in this corporate world. If, let me be honest, if I was a student, I would be only looking at playing some cricket somewhere, whether for Mauti or for Delhi or IPL, I don't know. Simple. But when I talk to you right now, and when you people are placed here, and we are having some discussions with Karan Mahendra Singh and Mr. Raman, is my humble request to you is that where you are going to enter, it's a literally a corporate war field. But when I entered my career in escorts through the campus hiring, 1979, July 1979 to be precise, there was no corporate war field kind of experience. It was perfectly fine, normal, very, very, uh, you know, relaxed kind of a corporate career when I started working with escort. No stresses, no kind of relative competition or uh, a kind of an industry framework where basically production with technological input was the key factor. Nothing more. If you are able to produce well, it was tractors and motorcycles and, and escorts, then you are going to make profits end of the year. No questions asked. If you manage your industrial relations well, handle the union and the workers well, you will reach your target of profits. Not now. Maruti, we can make at this point of time 50 lakh cars a year in the current facility at Gurgaon and Manasar, two plants. Panda lakh. But we are doing 1.2 because that is what the market wants. Market doesn't want 15 lakh cars from us at this point of time. But if today I look at 2020, we are looking at 2 million, 20 lakhs per year we will be doing. Current sales turnover in terms of value 
we are doing about 45,000 crores annually. And we are looking at 2028, crossing 1 lakh crore sales turnover at that point of time. So perhaps when we look at businesses, very, very competitive, very, very competitive. So when we look at careers, also things will be very, very competitive. When I look at perhaps your preparation right now, some questions which you can look at, whether you are having the required openness, flexibility, or you are having some ideas fixed in your mind that after you complete your post-graduation program, you will be doing X, Y, Z. Whether you have the self-discipline, maybe the stretch, quest for knowledge, which in my first question I get a kind of a impression that you don't have that quest at all. Maybe whether you will be looking for somebody in industry who can help you settle down, whether you are preparing for that. Maybe somebody like me, when you come in there, if I have met you today evening, and somebody comes and joins Maruti, maybe I will be quite happy to support initial one year. But whether you are preparing for it, whether you are thinking at all, somewhere perhaps also there will be this expectation whether you are keen to earn your first salary. And it will be very tough as I said. Also perhaps when I look at many people in institutes when we travel, go for campus hiring, meet engineering college people, B schools, diploma engineers, and then I find students have got a lot of ideas in mind. Everything should be Ram Raj, everything should be perfect, everything should be very fair, very clean. Corporate life may not be fitting into those expectations. If I use the word war field, then everything is fair in love and war. Corporate may not be reflecting ideals. We are reflecting business. We are not reflecting ideals. So at times I have fired people in the last 35 years from a worker to a supervisor to a manager even to a managing director I fired in the last company. A very close friend of mine who hired me into that company, New Holland Tractors, Mr. T. L. Palni Kumar was the managing director. Then I had to fire him because the London headquarters said, Siddiqui, we don't need this guy. Ideals will not allow me to operate really. And in typical this thing, Carl Sandberg, I was just referring to some uh, kind of preparation for this session here. And there is this little, very cute quote which came to hand, where the guy is saying, I am an idealist, I don't know where I am going, but I am on my way. Wasteful. Absolutely wasteful effort. Being too much idealistic, but don't know where I am going. But still going somewhere. So typically then perhaps I will look at this kind of uh, situation where you are today. 40 years that you are going to look for a corporate career, that much investment you will be doing out of your life. So better to prepare for those 40 years. That those 40 years should go very well. It's not one year or two year career you are looking at that we can be casual about it. Also perhaps when we look at the environment when I use the word corporate, Warfield, to a great extent speed is going to matter now in future. And when I gave you those statistics when we talk of producing a car in less than a minute, then designing a car, new car, when we talk of Filario or Sias now, earlier it used to be 7 years, 15-20 years back. Now it is roughly about 2.5 years and we are looking at achieving 2 years from concept to finish a new car should be ready for the market. Speed is going to matter to a great extent. Also perhaps when you look at innovation, changes, and you must have, how many of you read economic times by any chance? When we are looking at this environment and you are looking at a career in corporates and you don't look at economic times of financial express, it's very sad reflection on, on your preparation. There is a big article there on Maruti today that we are looking at cheap hybrid cars. And those hybrid cars will bring in fuel efficiency higher by 30% than what is happening today in, in our life. 20 kilometers may become 32 or 33 kilometers per liter of petrol. 
when we look at hybrid. To that extent, innovation will be the name of the game of business by the time you mature. And what perhaps we used to do in escorts, 79, is no longer valid. Now what Maruti does is that we have alternate plan A, we have alternate plan B, we have alternate plan C. What will work, God knows only. So much turbulence is there in the environment. And one year back, one and a half years back, there was a very big question in front of Maruti. Out of 12 lakhs, how many cars we should make in diesel and how many cars we should make in petrol? If I give you a hypothetical exercise right now, what will you recommend to Maruti? Based on your experience, how many we should make out of 12 lakhs diesel cars and how many petrol cars? But I give you one more statistic that three years back, petrol was selling 65%, diesel was selling 35%. Now give me the answer. For next two years, how many diesel and how many petrol? So we could never answer this question because there was this government indication that subsidy on diesel will be eased out. So diesel prices will be coming equal to the petrol thing. And two years back people were blindly buying diesel, 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 diesel. And in two years precise, we took a decision not to invest in diesel because investment was worth 400, 500 crores. And that was the right decision finally because diesel has started going down and today the economic times is also talking about petrol going up. So that was perhaps envisioning the future into the present. Before anybody else realizes this, we must understand what will be the trend in future. So that will also require imagination, that will also require trend study, maybe analysis of global trends and then decide. But past experiences, there can be some learning, but if you depend on past experiences to define future strategy, we are dead. That's the kind of environment we are going to enter. We typically call it a VUCA world, V-U-C-A, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, is where you are going to work. Typically perhaps when we look at the business environment, if I give you one more uh, view apart from this VUCA world, lot of global companies have come and started doing business in India and it is going the global way. It is no longer the Indian way of business. When I started my career 79 in escorts, it was hardcore the Indian way of business. There was nothing like global at that point of time. And one question which comes to my mind is, if I put you along with Koreans and Japanese, whether you will be able to compete with them? Yes or no? Right now to me it appears you will be washed out in front of them. But I have been working all through with these uh, kind of guys and by the way the God has done reasonably well. Now when I talk of globalization, I would like to just give you one example. 2007-8, when you people were maybe more younger, there was a very, very huge, deep recession globally, US, Japan, England, uh, Germany, everywhere, Europe, entirely. Deep recession is economy degrowing minus 3, minus 4 percent. India was still growing at 4.5, 5 percent, but India also got really scared because of globalization and people started talking here that it is also a recession year. And thousands and thousands of people were downsized. Their jobs were taken in one hour. You are not, not required by the company. 500, 700, 1000, 5000, 10,000, I don't know. All around us, this was happening. And at that point of time, in that downstream, people used to call me for conferences that, Mr. Siddiqui, can you talk about HR on the, you know, crossroads, when the economy is not doing. And then after 6, 8, 9, 10 months, economy recovered. In India especially recovered very fast. So 2009, 10, India was going 20%, 25%. And then the same kind of conferences were calling me and then they were saying that, Mr. Siddiqui, come and talk about HR on the upswing. Now, lot of such experiences where this volatile nature is visible, somewhere going down, somewhere going up. In the last five years, we have seen three swings, going down, going up and then again going down. Now we are witnessing slowly coming up again, fourth one, last five years. 
Now, human resources for that matter, in my thinking, is not seasonal. That it should be rainy season human resources strategy, winter season human resources strategy, summer season human resources strategy. Stupidity. Human resources strategy is 3 to 5 years, 7 year, 10 year perspective for a company it is defined. It is not hiring people and downsizing people just because something happened in US. But in India, there were companies and there were very senior HR fraternity leaders who exactly did that without understanding what was happening. That is the environment you are going to work with. The same diesel and petrol question, whether we keep our people or whether we downsize them, they were not able to answer. And when they went again to the market in 9-10, then people were very scary of those companies that they made so many people jobless whether better to join this company or not. Maruti gained in that perspective at that point of time. Perhaps when we are looking for you to get in there, therefore all the more need for you to prepare a, a kind of a good career. In uh, Indian population versus the Japanese population, there is one very big difference. Can you guess what is that difference? In our personality and the Japanese personality, our working style, their working style, our thinking, their thinking, there is one very big difference. They are very disciplined. We can also be disciplined. We are very emotional. And Japanese are just not emotional. Especially in business, they are absolutely faceless, emotionless. In Japan, somewhere, one very rich lawyer was in, a, in his big car, he was taking a drive in the evening, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. And to his surprise, he saw some Japanese, the side of the road, were eating grass. So this Japanese lawyer, very rich guy, he got very uh, surprised that why they are eating grass. So he went, stopped this big car and asked them, well, what are you doing? They said, last 15 days, no job, no money. Last 10 days, no food. So to satisfy the tummy, we are eating grass. So that Japanese rich lawyer said, okay, you come in my car. I said, we are three or four people. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, all of you can come. It's a big car and I will feed you this evening. So in the car, those poor Japanese, hungry Japanese, those who are eating grass, they think, sir, you are like God. You have been such a big help to us. So Japanese lawyers said, don't get into those kinds of formalities. No, 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 sir, you are not like God. You are actually God for us. Those poor Japanese were telling him in the car. He said, no, no, don't worry. Let us not get into these kinds of things. Sir, you have promised that you will feed us. Yes, yes, I will feed you today evening. Sir, you are God for us. Those poor Japanese said. Then the rich Japanese lawyer said, no, no, no. At my farmhouse, the grass is one meter tall. When perhaps we see business, we see business with a lot of emotional content. When they see business, they see business to the point and nothing else. To a great extent, when you are preparing to operate in this kind of a very competitive corporate war field, perhaps you will have to prepare from some such perspective. One more angle before we come to some more details. When we looked at business 20 years back, the competitive edge, the power of a company was defined on the left hand side, cost, competitiveness, features, technology, core competencies. But when we look at now, then now what is mattering is speed, responsiveness, capability, commitment, leadership, strategy. That is going to define competitive strength of a company, like Maruti, for example. And what happened recently, also I will refer to you in the last 18 months when there was no growth in automotive industry, but we still tried to create that. One huge difference is going to be that all the tangibles which were defining the competitive as 20 years back, cost, core competencies, technology features, are replaced by people-driven intangibles. When we talk of responsiveness of an organization, customer intimacy, leadership, strategy, employee scalability and commitment is all people driven. And in that context, perhaps when we look at also one development that globally India is perhaps going to be one of the youngest countries. Young customers, young democracy is what is going to be the future 
below the age of 35 over the next 30 40 years but when you look at japan on the other hand is an aging country they are going to face problems of working hands we are very fortunate in that respect but whether you can take advantage of that perspective but when we look at this young workforce very very young workforce in the country there is also a kind of experience in corporates is that they have got very high rather unrealistic career aspirations that is the experience in corporates in the last 5-7 years people like you coming to corporates and they have very very high expectations certainly it is recommended that we must start our careers and all the time 40 years we must have high expectations but we must also be looking at realistic and attainable achievements aspirations the standards you are going to set there and when i was going uh, before getting into hr or anywhere uh, in this post graduation i was going into cricket full time 365 days we used to play cricket and the idea was that to go Ranji Trophy Delhi and then go national and one day I realized that that is too unrealistic and very very high aspirations I have set for myself you know why there was a guy with whom I played and that day he made 326 not out in Aligarh Northern University and I made a zero that day that evening I took a call that stop this blind unrealistic you know career path let me get back to alternative plan b then i came into human resources so both of us same age that guy has represented india any guesses who could be that guy indian cricketer i played with kapil dev we both played same time when we were north zone he came from punjabi patiala he came from Yami. very high talent very high talent good that I realized that I was wrong very unrealistic if I would have continued maybe destroyed my career at that point of time next 4-5 years wasted and I never told couples this thing we know each other very well because of some corporate connections and all that in cricket but I have never told him that we had breakfast together and we played and I made 0 you made 326 not out which is history based on that he was selected in the Pakistan tour 1978-79 to great extent maybe that is where two very eminent people have talked about this young generation one is Mr. Ramadan who was the founder chairman of SEBI and my own uh, chairman Mr. R.C. Bhaiwa current chairman of Maruti Suzuki 80 year old very very outstanding professional and you must have read his name in the newspapers every now and then and perhaps the message here is very simple is that Mr. Damodhan says young MBS think they have arrived yes they arrived but only at the beginning of a long learning curve tremendous opportunity to learn and Mr. Bhargava says there is a shop floor or field unless you work with your own hands dirty your own hands go through that experience you will not be able to understand what a career is what a responsibility is in terms of career growth perspective and there was this little uh, you know in our time when we were very young is big discussion on Muhammad Ali a very famous boxer how many of you have heard his name now very old guy right he said something which is quite astonishing I hated every minute of training but I said don't quit suffer now and live like a champion later very very uh, tough career he had very tough career he had almost one or once or twice almost getting injured to the extent of uh, literally fatal kind of this thing again going back again preparing again coming back and then finally I think uh, many years back even I was very young when he was crowned the champion and then he, he regained that for many years even today respected worldwide somewhere perhaps you will have to set some such role models for your learning and when perhaps you look at your starting your careers 
there will be two options in front of you everywhere even now there are two options whether you go casual or whether you prepare hard there will be two options in life always you can take up a job as a routine 9 to 5 or you can take up a job as a passion as a ownership when I worked for Maruti last 11 years and right in the beginning when I was coming into Maruti board level interaction you can call it an interview roughly one and a half hours and then next day morning 9 o'clock this girl called me and said from Maruti that Mrs. Riki board is very happy to offer you this position of head of HR for Maruti I said just hold on, just hold on few more days I would like to have one more meeting with Maruti and they were very surprised that now the board has already met board of directors and they have already you know, liked your this thick profile and you have been made an offer and you are saying hold, 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 hold. I said yeah, some little uh, checking from my side of what you want and what I want. There was only one dialogue with Mr. Bhargav and a Japanese uh, director at that point of time. I said if you are looking for a guy who is going to come in and implement your instructions, I am not the guy. If you are looking for a guy head of HR who will come and decide things, let's be very clear, I will be deciding my own things. We will definitely have discussions and policy references, but I don't take instructions really blindly and implement them. I am not an executioner here at this level of my career. So I will decide things. You def define the objective and I will decide how we are going to go. And that is what exactly I have done 11 years. The, but you need to have guts to be able to do that. It's very risky. They would have also said, oh, get out Mr. Siddiqui, we don't need you. I would have lost a very excellent job. But that's how perhaps uh, it will start from tomorrow when you go out. When we are looking at uh, people, very young people, they frequently change jobs here and there, here and there, here, this company, 5,000 more, that company, designation, job title. Very funny. To me, it's reminds me of a monkey who is jumping on the trees here and there aimlessly. Or they can be a considered career change. For five years investment into a good company, now changing field, changing sector. That could be a good career perspective. Then you can have an excellent career when you are going senior and you are valued by the corporates. So some such maybe you will have to think of. But uh, people think mostly who make these kinds